Good evening. My name is Bob Ingram. I'm your chair tonight. Um, welcome everybody to the Plan Zone Commission meeting of today, Tuesday, April 16th. We will start with our public. No, let me back up just a second. We have a new member tonight that I'd like to introduce. She will be here in observatory mode. She will not really participate until her orientation this Friday. Erica Thomas is her name. She replaces James Stuck. Uh, Erica, could you give us just a brief overview and let us know why you're interested in being on this commission? Sure, thanks. Um, I'm Erica Thomas. I'm a faculty member at St. Ambrose University. Uh, so I co-direct our Master's of Public Health program. So that's sort of my uh, route into here is public health as sort of a housing uh, um, interest. I also serve on the board of directors for Vera French. And so they're getting into the development game as well. So I thought I could learn a lot here. I'm excited to learn more. Thank you, I appreciate that. And I look forward to our orientation this Friday. We'll move on to our public hearing agenda. Roll call, please, Commissioner Tolman. Is she on there? Go ahead. Dunlop. Here. Michael Berry. Here. Hepner. Here. Johnson. Here. Tallman. Here. Ingram. Present. Manus. Here. Garrington is excused. Schilling. Here. Thomas. Here. Schneider. Present. We have a quorum, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Tallman. First item, first and only item, is case ROW 4-02, the request of the City of Damport to vacate a portion of Lorton Place between Lorton Avenue and Lombard Court. It is in the sixth ward. Matt. Thank you. So the proposed uh, right-of-way vacation, it's at the intersection of Lorton Avenue, <coughs> where it intersects with Lombard Street and then uh, Lorton Place. So it's a triangular intersection. Uh, the City of Davenport Public Works staff is working on a road reconstruction project at this intersection and is proposing to vacate that small section of Lorton Place uh, as it veers to the northeast. So the subject area is uh, just under 4,500 square feet. Uh, the intent would be to vacate that land and then convey it to the abutting property owner at 2227 Lorton Avenue, so that's to the southeast of that corner. Um, that area would just become a landscaped front yard for that homeowner, and their driveway would be extended to Lorton Avenue. Um, so this is a uh, design of the proposed intersection following reconstruction. Um, so Lorton Avenue would continue to flow north to south, and then that uh, vacated portion would be turned into green space. There is currently a sanitary sewer line that runs through there, so an easement would be put in place uh, for access to that utility, as well as a telephone pole that exists at that location. Um, driveway gets extended to Lorton Avenue, and then two new uh, storm sewer intakes will be added at this corner to help address some of the storm water issues. Um, so drainage will be improved as a result of this project. Um, so it's in a residential neighborhood, so we have uh, residential zoning districts as well as residential general on our future land use plan. So the right-of-way vacation, it's a two-step process. The first is to determine if the right-of-way is needed for public purposes. And then the second is to negotiate and determine the terms of conveyance to the adjacent property owners. Um, that's dealt with uh, through the city's legal department. So in terms of public input, uh, property owners within 200 feet were notified of today's public hearing. A public notice was also published in the Quad City Times. Uh, public work staff has also been coordinating this project with the budding property owners. Um, to date, we've received one written response in favor of the vacation, and then um, had a phone call yesterday with a resident uh, opposed to the vacation. Um, concerns that were raised during that phone call were the stormwater issues in the area, as well as uh, traffic impacts and how that intersection will function following the vacation. Uh, so for today, the recommendation is to hold the public hearing and then city staff will provide a formal recommendation at the April 30th meeting. Thank you, Matt. Commissioners, any questions of Matt, staff? Commissioner Schilling. Um, wouldn't the your, your other button, please. Oh, I thought it. I got it. I hit it. 
Okay. Wouldn't the change in that intersection actually help with some of the stormwater runoff? Yep, so the proposed reconstruction design is being engineered to help address some of that uh, flow. So there'll be two brand new storm intakes that currently don't exist in that corner. Um, so it won't necessarily address the whole neighborhood stormwater issue, but it will improve it at that intersection. Commissioner Hefner, no longer. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, con um, Commissioner Schilling answered my question. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed that. My mistake. I did not hear you. You made a motion? No. No, no she, just she addressed my question. Well, the question. My mistake. I was lost. <laughs> The question being, okay, right, right, I heard that. I thought there was continuation of that. My mistake, Commissioner, what? We're good. Commissioner Dunlap. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, just a quick question uh, for staff. So is there any history on the property? Was that originally like an easement or something that was taken from the landowner or it just seems like a weird inter intersection the way? was drawn up originally. Do you guys know any historical information about how it got that way or not? Um, not at this time, but we can take a look and see if we can find a little bit of history on it for you. I just wondered whether it was taken at some point in the past from the landowner. I mean, that's all. I mean, obviously it's been that way for a long time. I'm just curious what the why the strange configuration in the first place. But I don't know that it's not, I'm not asking for you to do a homework uh, assignment. If you don't know the answer, that, that's also perfectly fine. So, uh, no, thank we you. need an assignment. We need an answer. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Commissioner Dunlop. Any other questions of staff at this time? Seeing none, would anybody from the public care to speak? If you do, I need your name and address, and you got about three minutes to speak. Please step forward to the podium. <clears throat> My name is Robin Robert, Robin Beagle Roberts. I own the property at 2220 Lorton. I have been there for nearly 30 years and spent many years before that across the street, so I have quite a bit of history with this area. Um, my first question is, two, norm, two new norm, the storms, uh, sewer intakes, are those the ones that are currently there and just being redone? Those are two additional ones. There's two. Okay, I'm kind of lost as to where those are. Are those going into the court? So um, just for orientation, it's it's kind of turned sideways. So um, your property would be on the very um, oh, there it is. Okay. top left so those corner. Are over there. Okay. So it would be kind of where the existing street is right okay. now. Um, can I show you where the water all flows from? coming from Locust all the way down. <clears throat> then this is a, um, this area has already been um, made more into a hill to help this drainage. So we have all this drainage. Currently it's going, going both ways. It's already going over the curve. Now you're going to have it go straight here, straight here, and yeah, maybe this will help, but it's not going to help till it gets down here. This is a tremendous amount of water, tremendous. I can tell you, it rips my yard apart constantly. It is a tremendous amount of water. That is one concern. My other question is, why is this being done in the first place? It's been here 60 years. Staff? I don't have a, a direct um, answer at this point, but we can ask engineering. It, it's, it was a capital improvement project and a street reconstruction, so... We, and we can absolutely get you in touch with the, the engineering people as well. Um, we're, we're just processing the, the vacation piece of it, but the reconstruction piece of it, we can definitely get you in contact um, with instead engineering. Instead of getting her in touch with engineering, can't we get in yes. touch with engineering and get answers by our next meeting? Yes, we can. Okay. 
That boulevard currently is a beautification area to the, the neighborhood. It's very nice. It's very lovely. It's been maintained by the neighborhood for 60 years. Why are we changing something that beautifies Davenport? It does not make sense, let alone the amount of traffic that comes down. Now, you do have forest that comes, comes also down <clears throat> to feed um, that Duck Creek area over there and down to 32nd, but we get a tremendous amount of traffic that comes down Lorton, and it splits because it's splitting to, to go to that whole side of Lorton. It's feeding those housing additions. Now you're going to take all that traffic and you're going to put it straight down Norton. I don't see that beneficiary at all, beneficial at all. The other thing is, my home and the home across the street, these are fairly large homes. <clears throat> Four bedrooms, five bedrooms. A lot of parking. Right now they're able to park over here, we're able to park over here, it divides it up, it allows good traffic flow, good traffic flow. We get a tremendous amount of, of emergency traffic down that street every week <clears throat> up on Locust by, um, by Locust on Lorton. They're parking on both sides. The neighbors up there already complain. It's terrible to get through. Then you've got the fire trucks coming through all the time. I just don't see how, why this is beneficial at all and why it was ever brought up. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably all I have right for now. Thank you. Anybody else? Good evening, all of you. Uh, my name is Madhukar Shrikhande, and we are all neighbors. I live on Lombard Court. The Can house you next give your address, please? 10 East Lombard Court, Denver, Iowa, 52803. Thank you. And uh, I concur with the lady. I'm, we've been living here for 20, almost 20 years. Uh, quietest place, a beautiful little uh, embankment that we have there. Uh, it is all the neighbors who get together and plant those trees, plants, have our neighborhood watch party there, and things like that. That's one. Two, right now, it has rained, and we're talking about sewers. There's a swimming pool right now, if we're going to have more of all that on this side. That's one. In the last 20 years, I, if I can, if I'm correct in thinking, I have not seen anything which, you know, had major accidents, and yes, people do go past. Uh, in the night, uh, across, but I've not seen anything in the quietest, remotest area. And I agree that we need to maintain our areas, roads, etc. Then I would certainly say Lombard Court, where I live, which are 10 houses, it's a cul de sac, that road needs a lot of improvements. You know, there are lots of cracks and moss and all that kind of stuff. I would like improvement on those lines rather than doing what. Money is being spent here. So I'm basically at a loss to understand why I'm taking <coughs> this beautiful green piece that we have at the center. <coughs> that green piece also gets funds from our council month to make improvements. You know, they have their beautification funds, and we ask for those funds. We get funds for that, and We've maintained that in the last 20 years that we have been, you know, we're the newest residents, I would say, than our neighbors Mayor, out here. Ma'am, I need you, you to address us because the microphone doesn't pick you up very well. Oh, I'm sorry. Turn around. Uh, I'm sorry. So uh, we are the newest, member, uh, newest neighbors here I mean, uh, to our neighbors. So I sincerely would like to know the purpose of this reconstruction or redoing that's going to happen. And if we have the money... Let's put it on the street where it really needs repair. That's the court as well as Lombard Street and a few patches on the avenue and Lorton Place as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else care to speak? I'm Don Faust. I, we live at 2634 East Lombard, which is... <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Just up the yeah, we're like up right up there. Yeah. Um, I guess I would concur with what's been said so far. I kind of we've been there for eleven years, and it's just kind of, that little flower area is really kind of nice. I also was going to ask why it's being done, but I guess what I would like to see done, and maybe that would be something. Obviously, maybe not this meeting, 
But the north, or let me think here, no, that's the southwest corner. Right there. Every time it rains or we get snow melt, there's a huge puddle there, and I don't know how to get that to not be there, but it's dangerous in the wintertime because it, it melts and then freezes, and um, that's, I guess, something that I would like to be see done, that one that you're, they're talking about. I guess I'm kind of with these folks. So, Thank you. Max? <coughs> Final call for comments? Questions? Seeing none, Commission, anybody have questions at this time? Commissioner Hepner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, staff, it, I've read uh, blueprints for many years, and it kind of looks to me like um, they're doing a reconfiguration of this whole area. And if I know engineering, they're going to fix this problem. Is that correct? <laughs> That's our understanding. Yeah. Uh, like um, I will um, in the morning talk to engineering staff, um, and we will make sure to have all those questions uh, addressed. And we will <clears throat> request that they also are present at the next meeting. Okay, I yeah. would appreciate if engineering could be here. Yeah. I, I am really familiar with this area. I live about a block away, <coughs> so I have experienced the winter. I have experienced the um, ice. Mm -hmm. um, it is somewhat dangerous. It's hard to drive a car quickly in the winter over there or at the speed limit even. So I understand the concerns definitely. But um, if I know the city engineers, this is going to be uh, a help to the city in that area, an intersection, I would presume. So that's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hefner. Anybody else? Commissioner Maness. Thank you. Uh, is there going to be an area that's been beautified and planted that is going to be destroyed through this project? I, I believe that some of the work that's needed will that will remove that area in order to get the storm intakes in. Um, I, I do know that there has been some conversation. Uh, I will check on the detail level of that related to that, um, and we will have answers for you at the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Maynes. Any additional? Commissioner Dunlap. Uh, just a quick comment, and it's along the lines of something like we're going to have engineering there anyway, but uh, you know, since it's also within my background, I'd just be curious for them to lay out the difference between the storm sewer <coughs> fix and the traffic, you know, if there's a specific traffic, you know, because you can solve the storm sewer issue maybe separately from the traffic, why the traffic pattern is changing, so I'm just curious to understand that. So hopefully they can, you know, bring both of those issues and be prepared to discuss how they fit together or, or maybe they're two separate issues in their mind. I, I'm not sure what the challenges are that they were trying to address with this plan. So that'd be the question that I have. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Dunlap. Any additional? Seeing none, we will close. ROW 24-02 for this meeting, and it will return to us in two weeks. Um, moving on to our regular meeting agenda. Roll call, please, Commissioner Tom. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dunlop. Here. Michael Berry. Here. Hepner. Here. Johnson. Here. Tallman here. Ingram. Present. Manus. Here. Harrington's excused. Schilling. Here. Thomas. Here. Schneider. Here. We have a quorum, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Tallman. I'd like to clarify, it'll return to us on April 30th. If it'd be same time, same location, if you'd like to return at that time, we will take a vote that night. Um, you will be able to participate for a short period. Thank you. We'll move on to roll, uh, we did roll calls, city council activity. Thank you. Um, I have a few updates for you. The, um, the preliminary plan for Splendor Estates was on the consent agenda and did pass uh, at council. Um, so at some point, I don't know exactly when a final plat would come through um, the, the Plan and Zone Commission. And then the final plat for NORDAV second edition was also approved by city council. Thank you, Laura. Secretary's report. Move report. Second. All in favor of the report is printed, signify by aye. aye. Opposed, same side. It is approved. Anything new with comp plan, Laura? Not at this time. Thank you. Zoning activity, Commissioner Johnson. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Tonight we have case ORD 24-02, request of the City of Davenport to amend section 17.08 of the zoning ordinance regarding billboard regulations. Staff recommends the Planning and Zoning Commission forward case ORD 24-02 to the City Council with a recommendation for approval, subject to the proposed amendments and findings, and I so move. Okay. Case ORD 24-02 has been moved and seconded for discussion. Matt? <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so just a little bit of overview. Um, so in December of last year, City Council passed a moratorium on new billboard development within the city. Um, the purpose of that was really to evaluate our current regulations and identify um, any necessary code updates. So the city of Davenport, we currently have 73 billboards scattered throughout our commercial corridors, the downtown, as well as our industrial parks. So our current billboard regulations, so currently they're only allowed in four zoning districts, two of our commercial districts, and then our light industrial and heavy industrial zoning districts. Um, our zoning ordinance also outlines principal use standards, um, which regulate the location of billboards, so they're prohibited along our interstate highway. They are also prohibited um, in historic districts and on properties with local landmarks. And then we also regulate um, distance from residential um, neighborhoods. So if a sign is less than 300 square feet, it must be a minimum of 100 <laughs> feet from any residential district. And then billboards over 300 square feet uh, must be at least 150 feet from any residential district. Um, we also regulate the sign area. So there's a maximum sign area allowance of 672 square feet plus an extension area, not to exceed 150 square, 153 square feet. And then there's a maximum sign height of 45 feet. Billboards are required to meet the principal building setbacks of the zoning district that they're placed in. And then there is a separation requirement between billboards with a minimum distance of 1,500 feet. So our code allows up to four billboard sign faces on one structure um, that's allowed to be in the V uh, configuration. And then we have two standards outlining how electronic billboards are regulated. <coughs> um, the first being that uh, electronic billboards cannot change more than once every eight seconds. Static images with no animation are required, and the transition from one image to the next must not occur in one second or less. And then the second requirement is that electronic display must contain a default mechanism to show a full black image or turn the sign off in case of a malfunction uh, within 12 hours. So throughout this process, city staff have been trying to identify um, some of the deficiencies with our city code. So with the feedback from city council, the public, and the Plan and Zone Commission last meeting, um, we've been able to kind of categorize the areas of concern. So that's really addressing the brightness and intensity of uh, electronic billboards, the over signage of our commercial corridors, visual distraction uh, that billboards have on uh, motorists, <coughs> impacts on the character of our residential neighborhoods, their proximity to the streets, and then separation requirements between um, electronic billboards. So city staff um, has a draft ordinance which is printed off in front of you. So on the slide before you, we have our definition of billboard in our current code, which is shown in black. So our code <coughs> defines billboard as a permanent sign directing attention to a specific business, product, service, entertainment, event, activity, or other commercial activity that is not sold, produced, manufactured, furnished, or conducted at the property upon which the sign is located. So staff is proposing uh, separate regulations that apply to a static billboard and separate regulations that apply to electronic. So in order to help us define those, we've added to our definition. So static billboards in our code, as proposed, would be defined as uh, display, static billboards display a fixed advertisement face where the face is not changeable within seconds or minutes, but where a change of face have to be re-erected and affixed to the structure. Um, so that would be your printed billboard or final graphic billboard. 
And then electronic billboards are digital displays that can be changed within seconds or minutes by remote or automatic means. So typically that's your LED or um, electronic computer display billboard. So there's a set of general regulations that are proposed that will apply to both static and digital, um, some of which are no change to our cur current ordinance. Um, so we're keeping the regulation that they're prohibited along interstate highways. Along with billboard structures are prohibited in historic districts and adjacent to historic landmarks. A new standard is that billboards are prohibited within required landscaping areas as outlined in our landscape code. Uh, reason for that being is we've seen some new billboard installations that are installed in required, for instance, parking lot landscape islands or buffer yards or uh, landscaping that surrounds parking lots. So we want to make sure that that landscaping remains intact and this would reinforce that issue. Uh, maximum height will remain at 45 feet. And then E and F are both new standards. Um, so creating a universal setback of 25 feet from lot lines. So the C2 district, there's no minimum principal building setback. So in that district, in effect, you could have a billboard placed right up to a lot line. Um, our C3 in industrial districts have a minimum 25 foot setback. So we thought let's make that uniform and create a little bit of distance between uh, properties. And then F helps us regulate the separation requirements. So billboard distance separation shall be measured from the closest point of each billboard structure. Uh, this is measured in a straight line along either side of the right of way of the street. Um, so that 1500 foot separation requirement. So if you're on the south side of 53rd Street, that applies also to the north side of 53rd Street. So changes to static billboard regulations, um, really we're keeping the same requirements in terms of the 1500 feet separation between static billboards that will remain. The maximum uh, sign face will remain at 672 with the extension area. The distance to a uh, residential district will remain at 300 feet. The um, four billboard faces will also remain unchanged. And then the new standard, standard E, <clears throat> pertains to how they are illuminated. So that standard would be any billboard illumination shall be designed, located, shielded, and directed to prevent the casting of glare or direct light upon roadways and surrounding properties and prevent the distraction of motor vehicle operations or pedestrians in the public right away. So that's a similar requirement that we have in our sign code. Um, so just, you know, this was a, I guess a blind spot in our current code and how billboards are lit up at night. So then we have um, a set of new standards for regulating electronic <coughs> billboards. So the first one being that they are prohibited in the C2 corridor commercial district. Um, this district tends to have smaller lots that are more built out. Um, Davenport's commercial corridors are fairly well developed at this point with a number of signage. So this will reduce some of the clutter on our commercial streets. We're increasing the separation requirements between digital billboards um, from 1500 to 3000. So we're doubling that distance. Um, some of the rationale there is uh, electronic billboards are visible from further distances given their nature of display. Um, so this will kind of minimize the view shed as you look down a commercial street. So the maximum sign area is being reduced uh, to 400 square feet. Um, electronic billboards shall be a minimum of 600 feet from residential districts. So that's increased from 300. Standard E, uh, up to two electronic billboard sign faces are allowed and one billboard structure. A V arrangement is permissible. However, no more than one electronic billboard sign face can be visible from any one street direction. So our current code would allow up to four electronic billboard signs, um, two facing the same way. Uh, staff feel that that would be um, a visual deterrence in our community, so just limiting it to one clean static, or one clean electronic display um, in each direction. 
Um, standard F is the same in terms of how electronic billboards change and rotate images. Standard G is the same, um, regulating uh, when, they, when there's an error or a malfunction that they must default to the full black image. And then uh, F pertains to the illumination and the brightness component of electronic billboards. So that is the maximum brightness is limited to 5,000 nits when measured from the billboard's face at its maximum brightness during daytime hours and 200 nits when measured from the billboard face at maximum brightness from dusk to dawn. The time of day between sunrise and sunset, the billboard must have an ambient light meter, an automatic or manual dimmer capability um, to regulate illumination. I'm testing my vision right now. So, <laughs> so yeah, condition F basically will regulate our brightness component. Next slide. So in terms of timeline, so tonight uh, the commission will take a vote, which is a recommendation to city council, uh, who will then have their own public hearing and have three readings on this item, which would place the final <coughs> vote at June 3rd, so a day before the moratorium ends. June 12th, sorry. Next slide. Uh, so with that, um, so staff is recommending the commission forward uh, staff's proposed amendment to city council with a recommendation for approval. So the findings being that the amendment's consistent with our comprehensive plan. It promotes public health, safety, and welfare. It's consistent with the intent and general regulations of the zoning ordinance. It reflects a change in policy and development trends. Um, the amendment will create additional nonconformities. Um, however, there are a large number of nonconforming billboards so existing non-conforming billboards can continue to exist at their location. Um, this code would not cause any billboard to be removed. Is that it? Was the chair? Thanks, Matt. I have a couple questions. Um, since the brightness of a traditional board compared to the new LED boards are measured differently. Does staff have, do the inspection department have the proper readers to be able to determine what's compliant and what isn't? That's my understanding. Um, so this actually is very similar language to our sign code right now. The one difference being um, uh, less nits at night um, and that's generally because of the size, and this is in line with some research that we did um, when we were looking at the code. So we should have the cap capability to enforce and um, that we would also give the billboard companies the opportunity to provide that data to us as well. When I asked that question this morning, I was heading to a job site at four o'clock and I was on uh, Arterial Street that had a, I don't know, two foot by three foot sign advertising the business. And I'm here to tell you, that white light at that time in the morning, it had yellow lettering. I couldn't read it. The white light was so overpowering. And I, I just wonder if it's within regulation. I've seen some LED. I realize LEDs appear brighter than your standard signs. But I just want to make sure that if they're turned in as being not compliant, that we've got somebody that can measure that. Yep, that's my understanding. So okay. if, if you, we can... We can double check that if you give us the I'd, information. I'd appreciate it at some point in time. That being said, commissioners, Commissioner Schneider. I'm wondering, it is, what is the impact on the existing signs that are within the city now with the, with the new uh, uh, changes? So they would be able to remain in place and they are able to maintain um, their, their status uh, and make any repairs as necessary. They follow our non-conformity <coughs> section under the use, uh, which enables them additional time to repair if something happened to it, so they would be able to reestablish it. 
Is there a particular uh, billboard vendor that might be more impacted than others? And I don't need names or anything. I'm just wondering if that, I'm wondering, what, will there be you know, a reaction? Um, there's, there's one billboard company that owns the majority uh, of the billboards. Um, so that would be the, the main pushback, I think, that we would receive. Okay. Thank you. Laura, I'm a little surprised that we had no, nobody here from the ad companies at our public hearing. Has there been pushback? Are they even aware of these changes? I believe we might have someone here today, um, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, uh, there's been a couple phone calls um, kind of wondering what's going on um, and what specifically it's speaking to. So um, nothing major at this point, but um, we'll, we'll I'll let a gentleman speak if, if Well, you and normally to. I'm trending back to our old plan and zone rules of not allowing people that don't show up at a public hearing to speak at the night we vote on it. I will allow this tonight, but I will be trending back to our old standards. Okay. Yeah, there, there was significantly bad weather at our last meeting as well. There was a blizzard, so. Uh, we were all here. Just saying. Commissioner Johnson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This kind of goes just along with Jane's. I was just curious, of the 73 billboards that we have, how many will now, or approximate percentage, will be non-conforming? And, and then are the new non-conforming, if, if this creates new, additional, are they notified, and how does that work? Do you want to go back to the map? Yeah. So of our 73, as you can see, we have quite a few in our downtown. So all of those, as they stand today, are non-conforming. Um, so those will remain non-conforming. Uh, any billboard in our C2 district, so we've got a few on 53rd and Kimberly. Um, so those would be potentially added to our non-conforming list. Again, they could still continue uh, to operate and be in use. They can change sign faces, just not expand size or area. And um, if they were destroyed by an act of God, they have a period to reestablish. Are they notified? No, not outside of just normal publication. Is that it? Thank you. Commissioner Dunlap. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, just a question about the non-conforming again. Um, so with the electronic sign, I mean, I can understand, you know, grandfathering structures that cost significant, you know, amounts for someone to change. But, like, if there's a public safety concern over the brightness of an electronic sign that existed previously and the person could turn that, reasonably turn it, down, you know, through electronic means, is that something that the city would consider pursuing? I mean, I realize, like I said, grandfathering in or putting an undue burden on someone that had no ability to per perceive that that was going to happen. But, you know, now that you're dealing with an electronic scenario, what options would there be to try and, you know, request conformance for brightness? Thank you for bringing that up. That is actually our intent for the brightness component specifically would be to um, reach out for any complaint based ones we receive to ask them to comply with the, the new standards. We did talk to our legal department about that as an ability and we can write that um, into the language of the ordinance that would give them a certain period of time to comply if they have that capability um, already installed on their billboard. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Dunlap. Commissioner Maynard. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry I wasn't here on April 2nd. I was out of town. This is a really significant amount of work the staff has done, and I guess I just wanted to ask you, where, where did you um, investigate and come up with the standards that you're recommending? Did you look <coughs> at uh, national recommendations at certain other communities? What was your, your source to to propose, make this proposal? Um, uh, yes, to all, all of that. So, so we did research other Iowa mm -hmm. communities specifically, knowing that, um, that state by state, there are some specificities right. related to that. So we did research to other um, Iowa communities. We um, read through some policy statements from some of the larger um, outdoor advertising um, groups out there. And then we 
um, read through some um, uh, more research-based papers that were out there from DOTs mm -hmm. um, related to recommendations on brightness. Okay. But this was totally in-house. This is a big piece of work that, that you're submitting, so I thank you. Thank you. It's good work from the staff. Thank you, Commissioner Maness. Any additional questions or comments from the commission? Seeing none, would anybody in the audience care to step forward and identify yourself and make your statements known? I, we are just you need, here you, to, you need to step up to the podium, identify yourself and address. Uh, my name's Chad Haker. Um, I'm with Huntington Billboards. We're not local. We're, we have Iowa billboards, but none in Davenport. Um, thank you for the opportunity. I, I, we were really here just to hear what the new regs were going to be. That, that's why we weren't at the last meeting, because of, there was going to be no new regs. So there was nothing. For, we didn't know what you were changing. So uh, with the blizzard and all that, we kind of, they said we would have the opportunity to, to hear the new regs today. And so that's why we're here. So that's really that. Um, you know, we, we've been around this business a long time. The changes, quite honestly, are not huge. So from that perspective, from that's probably why you don't have any advertising companies here, because they're just not a big change in 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 those regs. So thank you very much. Appreciate thank you. Your time. Appreciate your participation. Anybody else from the audience or commission? Seeing none, roll call, please. Commissioner Thomas. Dunlop. Here. Yes, sorry. That's fine. <laughs> that was earlier. Yeah, I'm new. Uh, you can't say that anymore. <laughs> Eichelberry. Yes. Hebner. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Tallman. Yes. Manus. Yes. Schilling. Yes. And Schneider. Yes. Motion carries, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Thank you, Commissioner Tallman. That would conclude the zoning activity. We'll move on to subdivision activity. Commissioner Hefner, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've got case F24-05, request of Axiom Consultants on behalf of Red Barn Storage LLC for a final plat of Rumen second edition. The one lot subdivision is located at 3901 Hickory Grove Road on 3.37 acres. Staff is recommending the Plan and Zoning Commission accept the listed findings and forward case F24-05 to the City Council with a recommendation for approval subject to the six listed conditions, and I so move. All in favor of case number F24-05 being uh, moved for discussion, signify by aye. No. Oh, I thought we were... Yes, but I thought we'd, sorry. I'm a little confused tonight. And I'll tell you why later. <laughs> Matt, you want to go ahead? Okay. So subject property is highlighted in yellow. Uh, so just off of Hickory Grove Road, and then behind is the intersection of uh, Kimberly and Fairmont. So the property, it's zoned um, I-1, which is a light industrial district. Uh, the site's currently Red Barn Storage. They're looking to do an expansion of their site into the lot to the south. So as part of that, they're combining the two parcels to facilitate that development. Um, shown as regional commercial, and it's within our urban service boundary and our future land use map. Um, so before you is the proposed plat combining the two lots into one. So they'll maintain their current access point onto Hickory Grove. Um, so real purpose is to combine the lots and establish easements for that development. Um, so with that, city staff is recommending approval. So the plat conforms to our comprehensive plan, prepares the area for future development, and is consistent with our subdivision requirements. So we're recommending six conditions, two of which are fairly standard, um, removing building setback lines from the plat, which aren't required. Um, four, to establish needed utility easements on the plat and include a note vacating any unused easements. And then there is a creek on the east side of the lot, so to provide a 50-foot drainage easement associated with that creek, and then to include a note for stormwater detention 
that is required by the property owner and upon development. Thank you, Matt. Commissioners, any questions at this time? See none? I have a couple. I was well hog the microphone some more. What, what does regional commercial allow at that facility? Does it allow car repair and outside storage? And the reason, let me give the background. The reason I ask, I've lived in this neighborhood for as long as I can remember. I drive by it multiple times a day. It used to be a screw machine facility with a couple of homes there, the owners of the, the company. And they did a great job, great business, everything. And it kind of expanded to where they put some other equipment into a new building. And with that expansion, um, when they eventually closed the business and moved on, now all of a sudden uh, the storage component comes into play where businesses or a business has popped up using the outside garages and now we're working on vehicles and storing them outside. And I'm curious if that's even allowed. Yes, so it's, it's I-1, so both minor and major vehicle okay, uh, would be question. allowed. Um, there are some provisions as principal use standards associated with that, that they can, the, they can work on the vehicles um, while dismantled, um, uh, but they're not supposed to be stored as dismantled outside. So if that's an issue, let me know. Um, the, the goal of this is to prepare the site to be um, a, a, a boat and RV storage facility specifically. All and, indoor or outdoor? Um, so <clears throat> they, they would be um, indoor. Well, our definition still calls them outdoor because the, there'll be overhead door access from the outside. They're not, you don't enter the building and then access the units. So that's how, that's our differentiation between outdoor and indoor in terms of outdoor storage. So I believe one building that's remaining on, so they're doing um, significant demolition and removal of, of some of the um, um, buildings as part of that project. So um, they're, they're, one of the buildings that's remaining is indoor storage. So um, you enter the building and then they have the overhead doors on the inside. So that would be more of your traditional, like, um, you know, I'm moving or, or things like that kind of storage. Yeah. Well, my concern is I'm assuming that the homes will be torn down yes. if they're on this property. Yeah. So when I say outdoor storage, I'm talking about a big fenced-in lot with a whole bunch of RVs sitting outside. So there, that... there'll be structures. So all of them will be in a structure. That's my yep. question. Yep. Okay. And then part two is, as I briefly discussed with you earlier, Laura, and I know you say that doesn't need to be one of the points of, of uh, one of the conditions, is there isn't a... A, a single square foot of poured concrete or asphalt on that property except where they've torn down a building. Will this all need to be paved and is the petitioner slash owner aware of that with hard surface? Yes and yes. So we do have the site plan in hand. Um, they are removing a, a lot of the the existing um, surfaces and we'll be replacing them. I know that there is some illegal gravel area out there right now. We stopped work ordered that um, a while ago, and, the, um, and that will be used as the sub base for some of the paving area. So, That's fine. It, and and the, the, the nice thing in this situation is because they're going to construct new buildings, we will hold occupancy um, and they will not be able to use the buildings until that pavement is. Thank in you. Place. I appreciate that comment. Yeah. Would the, is a petitioner or representative here, and would you like to step up and explain your project? and then possibly take questions from the commission. Yeah, you bet. Brian Belk, Accident Consultants. Uh, we're the engineer on the project for the developer owner and certainly representing them and happy to answer any questions. Uh, both your questions, excellent, and more handled, handled correctly. These would be enclosed buildings in which are handling the storage of these um, RVs, campers, boats uh, type units. As noted, pretty much you know everything other than two buildings there on the west side or north side. I'm sorry, will um, the house everything will be demoed? As will any of the existing gravel seal coat left over, and it'll be new uh, concrete, new pavement there. There will be a stormwater management basin as well on site to handle the, the stormwater management off this new development as well. Certainly happy to answer any questions. I, I want to comment the dairy barn. I've I've looked at that forever. I mean, yeah. I knew the owners and dealt with them in the past. 
Uh, what you're doing to it, I think, is really unique. And yeah, really, it's looking pretty nice. So. Very nice. Yeah. I mean, not that it looked bad before as a dairy barn. I want to say I'm glad I got to meet you because what you're doing to it is really sprucing that up. Great. Thank you all. Very, I very appreciate it. Commission, any questions of the petitioner? Petitioner's representative? Wow, I guess you're off very easy. <laughs> Staff well, and, and as noted, site plan is in process. We've been working with the city on the review comments and getting pretty close. So, yeah, appreciate everybody's assistance. Staff did a great job of explaining everything, so no questions. All right, thank you very appreciate much. Appreciate your attendance. Thank you. Any final questions of staff? Seeing none, Commissioner Tallman, roll call, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Eckleberry? Yes. Hepner? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Tallman, yes. Manus? Yes. Schilling? Yes. Schneider? Yes. And Dunlop? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Commissioner Thomas. That will conclude subdivision activity. We'll move on to future business or anything. Um, so next meeting, we would have a recommendation on the right-of-way vacation for Lorton Place, and then um, we have a final plat um, as well. Thank you. Communications, anybody? I need to communicate something. I want to apologize to everybody for my earlier discombobulation. Um, my, my concern was, I love having my laptop here so I can reference back and forth, I can look at maps. I'm, I'm not one that wants to waste a bunch of papers printing hundreds of pages. Well, have you figured out why I can't download the new software? I mean, it I, might I be love, your device. I, I so. referenced back year, two years, looking at packages that we did in the past, and now I can't figure out. I even took to my IT person where I work. They couldn't figure it out. Okay. So let's take a look at it, because um, um, I, I know that there was a problem initially with, with how it was um, interfacing with some um, like iPads and tablets. Um, we went back after you'd mentioned it last meeting af afterwards to me. Um, when you sit at a desktop, it works, so we, we need to take a look at, at, at what you have. So if you want to um, bring it in, and I can voice your, uh, we can take a look at it, and then we can talk to IT. And maybe our next one-on-one yeah. -on -one meeting, I can bring it with yep, me. Seriously, great. I couldn't figure it out again today, even. Yeah, it doesn't right. surprise me at all. I mean, it's still new, so thank you for your patience and dealing Good. with that. Um, so if, if anybody has any struggles in, in how to navigate the new system, let us know. Um, it did not work on my desktop. It didn't work on your, to download it? Right. Okay. Today, before the meeting. Okay. It didn't work on my laptop either. And okay. I don't have an Apple iPad, nothing. It's a simple sure. laptop. So. Uh, Commissioner Hefner, do you have an, uh, um, like an Apple product or is not. it PC? I've got an Apple uh, phone, but okay. PC is not. Okay. Thanks. We can talk a little bit after to see if we can figure it out. Okay, so anyway, I'm a little more combobulated than I was today, <laughs> if that's a word. <laughs> and, I, and I apologize for that. Um, moving forward, any additional communication or other business? See none? Do I have a motion to adjourn? I have a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor of adjournment, say five aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, same side. We're adjourned. And I will try to get recombobulated. <laughs>